As you can see, my summer garden is still quite active, even in this intense summer heat. Let me give you an update on my backyard organic raised bed garden. All right, so as I stand out here in the garden, um, temperature's already over 9 degrees. With the heat index, it's going to get up to over 100. Um, so that's just kind of your typical summer weather here. At this time of the year, it's either hot as can be, uh, getting up into the hundreds with a, a heat index. It's either raining or storming, you know, with a thunderstorm passing through, maybe even a tropical system, or both. But we laugh about it, the meteorologist, you know, on the, on the news channel, when he gives an update, at least got a 50-50 chance of getting the weather report right. And so with that in mind, I haven't been able to spend as much time as I'd like to out, out here in my garden. Uh, between work, between the weather. The super intense heat punishes you for being out here. And then of course all that rain does not do always do good uh, for our plants. So there's some maintenance tasks I gotta, gotta do. Gonna have to pull some plants, some things aren't producing anymore. And then I'm gonna have to go ahead and get some beds ready uh, for the August planting. So we'll do that coming up. Then I'll give you an update of the plants that are, are still thriving from our spring garden actually as well as the seeds that we sowed in last month's video of sowing seeds in July. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe. I don't want you to miss any of the great content. Um, like the video, share it if you want as well. All right, so let's get started. So I've got three or four maintenance things I got to do. I've got to go ahead and pull some weeds um, that's either in the walkway or uh, actually in the bed. That's why you want to check it as often as you can and go ahead and pull them before they get well established. I gotta get some weeds out. And again, we get them before they get established. Not near as bad. I do need to put some more pine straw down here though. And you also get some weeds that blow up or a bird dropping may drop some seeds. So you just gotta pull them out before it gets too bad. Now I gotta go ahead and trim back some of my vining plants. Primarily, we're talking about the loofah gourd. That sucker has, I mean, it, it has grown all over the whole garden. If I let it, if I hadn't cut it back some and then cut it back now, it would grow all over the freaking garden. So, it already has impacted some other plants. It grew, grew kind of over the top of some tomato plants, kind of smothered them out and peppers as well. And finally, I gotta go ahead and pull some plants that are just not producing anymore. A lot of my tomatoes are just, there's no hope. Um, once it gets this hot, um, and I can tell you if you can see how wet I am, uh, I'm just drenched with sweat. It's over 100 in the uh, heat index. Um, nevertheless, all your plants don't do well in this kind of heat. Some of the tomatoes are planted in the spring. They've run their course. Time to pull them up. Now, my okra, and I'll show you that in a little bit. They love this heat. Obviously, so is the loofah gourd. It loves the heat because it's just growing like crazy. All right, got some... Uh, I think it's a boysenberry around the corner here. These vines just growing like crazy. I have to cut them back. Problem is, I just don't need any more uh, blackberry, boysenberries, those kind of things. All right, so as you can tell, this is the loofah gourd. This thing is just went everywhere. I've got to take back control here. See, look at this. I mean, it's just, just going everywhere. I don't need that many loofah gourds, I don't think. So you can see that gourd that came from over there. It's grown all the way through here into that garden all the way down here. So it's time to get those cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and pick these out. I'm not worried about it. So it's time to pull some tomatoes. 
Yeah, I'm kind of kicking my own behind for this because this is hard work. I left this uh, Lufa uh, gourd and the birdhouse gourd, man, they got they just got way out of control. They're, I'm going to have to pull all these uh, tomatoes as well. That's okay, though. That's called gardening. If it was so easy and perfect, everybody would do it. You know, it's kind of like fishing. We don't say we're going to go in the boat and catch fish because you don't know. You're going to have to go fish. Just like gardening, you don't know how things are going to turn out. You hopefully will get some produce. Most of the time you will. Sometimes you won't. Wash fine bore in this section here. I'm gonna have to go and kill them all, I think. See if you take your eyes off of, off the ball for just a short time. Some squash fine bores will come and just eat you alive. There he is right there, you see him? And look you here, the that darn vine and it's going all over my time of tea is over here too. I mean, this thing is just, I think, one of the fastest growing plants I've ever seen. It's ridiculous. I did some uh, fermented, I guess they were cayenne, red, red thin cayenne, and jalapeno uh, with a couple of more greener you know, type of peppers. Made some hot sauce the other day. I think I'm going to. Get some of these tomatillas here, ferment those, and you can make a salsa verde, but it's with fermented tomatillas. So I'm, I'm gonna try that, I think. That's what's fun about gardening, is you can try different things you haven't grown before, and you can cook it different ways too, just to have fun. This lufagore plant is beautiful. Yeah. You can just see all the bees, all the activity. Look at that black one, just pretty, pretty bee right there. And Rue's in on the action. Rue! All right, so we went ahead and took care of some maintenance activities out in the garden. Now let's take a look at some of the plants that I planted in spring that are still thriving. And then we'll take a look at some of the seeds we sowed last month in a July episode uh, in the middle of the summer heat, and they're just doing good. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at those plants. So you saw I went ahead and, and cut back a lot of the lupa gourd um, plant the vine that was growing like crazy. Let me show you now though, what they look like. Here's one right here It's a good 16 inches or so Got one here They're kind of stealthy. I didn't know I had this many of them Again, this is one of the bigger ones. That's a good 20 inches long. This one's about the same, just a little curved. Good size one. A little smaller one. So we got about probably eight, nine, ten. I don't need any more than that. Um, but anyhow, so we're happy with it. So hey, look, if you're in zone 9A or anywhere near, if you're looking for something that grows good in the heat, I can tell you one thing it absolutely does, and that's the loofer gourd. All right, so we're going to put these gourds up here. Let them, let them uh, cure up here, babe. I'll tell you what, I'm pulling in from the other side. All right, I got this big one. Big, huge birdhouse gourd. It doesn't have the bulb. It doesn't enlarge right here at the top. Don't know why, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and put it up here to cure as well. All right, this is my first time to go ahead and do um, birdhouse gourds. So if you think this is a crazy idea to put them up here in my shed, um, please let me know down in the comments down below. All right, a while back I planted some ginger. And you can see all these plants right here, these three main pieces our ginger this this uh, leaf here so you look you got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen stalks but these things just absolutely grow like crazy here in zone 9a my backyard you got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen or so stalks 
and this is the other piece this was all for one piece that i cut up i think it's time to go ahead and cut some flowers we'll put them in a vase here's a little zinnia pink all right got a pretty purple and an orange zinnia let me go ahead and harvest those too and got a little different shade of purple here i don't know if you call that purple close enough let me cut that one too all right got a few more flowers those are strawberries, something others, and that is a Celius. Got some more flowers, throw in the flower vase. Remember, flowers make wife happy. Wife happy, me happy. All right, my lemons. This is a uh, improved Meyer lemon. They are starting to turn a little yellow. Not real productive. I moved it back here. I'm not as productive as it was in the other place, the other location. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's take a look at the seeds that I sowed back in July, like three weeks ago or so. Let's take a look at those seeds. So this is a Minnesota Midget Melon. And they only grow about four foot vines, so we'll see how they do. This is the heirloom pumpkins that my uh, in-laws, my, my, actually my uncle and aunt in-laws sent to me. I don't know what kind they are. They look like they're doing pretty good. Now I'm going to have to look at the squash vine board and see if it's going in. Alright, so right here I got the Clay County yellow meat watermelon. Come on down here. This is a zucchini. Cucuzella de Napoli. I think possibly the squash vine board is already hit here. I'll check it in tomorrow and see. This is a southern piggot pea. So it's kind of like a black eyed pea. Um, grows good in the summer. It's looking pretty good. Alright, coming down here, we got some okra. And this is Alabama. Um, Alabama red okra doing pretty good All right, these beans here they're they're a vine bean or a pole bean they're a Fort portal jade Bean comes from Africa. They're actually a pretty a nice pretty color of green pretty neat looking This is the zing orange okra Orange thing okra is one I've been planting for probably six, seven years. Um, they get pretty large, but from all the ones I've, I've compared against, they stay pretty soft um, longer than some of the other species. So I really like the orange jing. Right here, I got some moon stars, Cherokee, um, watermelon. Over there, got some Wilson Sweet Watermelon. Got some Old Time Tennessee Melon. Got a Minnesota Midget Melon here. All right, here we got some Minnesota Midget. This is Clay County Yellow Meat Watermelon. That back here is the stars and stripes. And then the Rajasthan honey melon here on this, this plant. Got some jalapenos growing in here. Yeah, got some more peppers growing here. Now they've cleaned out some of the tomatoes. That will grow pretty pretty good. I mean, look how look how uh, robust this uh, plant is. How many peppers are on it? There's some orange spice peppers. Look at all the bees on the uh, celosia. Tomatillas. Tomatillas grow inside this uh, little snail. Tomatillas grow inside this uh, little husk. In this bed, I kind of let things run as they want. There's some zinnias. I just cut them back. Um, plant flowers, right? Look here. Got some watermelon growing. There's a little watermelon right here. Got some peppers. I think it was Jimmy Artello or something. They're kind of sweet peppers. This plant here did a video a couple weeks back. 
Um, it had aphids and mealybugs and spider mites all on it. And you can kind of tell the way the leaves are spotted like that. That kind of indicates with the, when they do that. But between water and some uh, neem oil spray, it pretty much take, took care of this. Uh, took care of the bugs on this on this plant. So we'll have some lima beans here in no time. Hey, thanks for joining me at Louisiana Simple Living again today. The weather, whether heat or the rain or both, has been punishing the garden and myself, <laughs> come to think of it. So uh, it's been really, really hot, humid, and rainy. Haven't had a chance to spend as much time as I'd like to in the garden, which is at least once a day. You know, nevertheless, though, the garden's still going strong. It's thriving. And some plants are ready to be pulled. So we went ahead and pulled some tomatoes, pulled some other plants. They're just not productive. There's no need leaving the garden. They're going to extract nutrients. That just ain't going gonna, ain't gonna to be productive into harvest. If you like what you see on this channel, please go ahead and like it, subscribe, ring the notification bell. It means the world to me. And so just as a reminder, um, make memories now rather than later, especially since we got this COVID, the Delta COVID uh, variation going on. Um, make memories now when you can. So yesterday, Aaron and I went on a day trip, went to New Roads, ate a lunch at Morell's on False River, then went into St. Francisville, visited a few things, then headed home. So it's just, just a day trip, but it was a memory. We made some memories, so that's important. So go out in your backyard and let's plant something. And as always, I will see you on the next video.